The NBA Combine wrapped up last week, and way too much attention was paid to a guy that's probably not going to be drafted until the 45th pick or later in Bronny James. I, I refuse to believe anybody's going to use a first-round pick. I refuse. Like, when we had uh, Kristen Peek on last week, <laughs> I, I was like, she's like, you know, he performed really well. It's like, yeah, well, he did. But. No, he did. He did perform really well, but he still measured six foot one, and he still did not shoot very well at the combine. And I was still go back to, I've, I've yet to watch a game, whether on TV or in person, mm-hmm. that Bronny James has been the best player on the floor. Yeah. Which, with, in, with NBA players, should be a thing. It should it, it should be a thing, no. and I mean there there's a lot of criticism in flat going to Andy Enfield's way for the way that he used him and used their lineup at USC, which is fair, but it doesn't change the fact that when Bronny was on the floor, you were never sitting there going, yeah, he's got that it factor, and they they say a lot of it went into the heart condition yes. that he has, and he was he was on a minutes limit and all those things. And that every bit of it's true. It, all of that is true, and they had nine guards on the roster, and but the roster made no sense. He still didn't look like he had that it and that's something that it was the same yeah. when he came here for the Oops, Les Schwab Invitational for, for Schwab, yeah. he was here for the LSI mm-hmm. and Jackson Shellstead played better than him Ron Holland when they played uh, Duncanville yep better than him like and, and it, when he was here for Hoop Summit it, same same thing it's never awesome. performed as the best player on the floor like you no. never saw that it and when you see NBA guys they stand out they stick out yeah. like Ron Holland stood who out. He, he stood out in spades. Yeah. He is a bona fide player. Like, a lot of people here, Peyton Pritchard has carved out a hell of a role for He's himself. He's been significantly more successful than anyone thought he would be. When that guy was in high school, you said, no, he's different. Yeah. He is different than anybody else. And LeBron, or Bronny James, was he was a really good player. Like, if he Bronny was a really James... good player. But we watched him against Shellstead at the LSI, and it was like, He's good. Yeah. But, but he's, he, not, he's not the no. best player on the floor. If Bronny James is Bronny Johnson, he would be a four star prospect. Yeah. That's, kind of getting the uh the old uh Manning bump there. Yeah. Arch Manning yeah, bump. Yeah, it's it's certain it's abs look, is Bronny a high level college prospect? Yes. Is he a high level NBA prospect? No. no. If it, uh, and that's okay. It, and it, he is getting the nepotism bump. And to act otherwise is wildly insincere. In, in, yeah, insincere. And that has everything to do with uh, how the media has shaped it. And Kendrick Perkins on ESPN, who was Captain Clutch himself, went and uh, did not take an arrow for the Clutch camp. Hey, look, let me say this. We have to stop. We have to stop. As the media and everybody else shining the light on, on Bronny because – it's other players that are deserving, that deserve our attention, right? The lottery guys, the guys that are actually like going, yeah, that are going to get drafted in the first round. Like we're talking about a guy, a young man that's possibly going to go late second round yeah. or not getting drafted at all. That it, I've never in my four years of working here, I've never sat on the table where we're talking okay. about a second round pick. But this is LeBron James' son, and Thank that is you. a legitimate storyline that one of the greatest of all times has a son trying to play in the NBA and you have at the to same give time. Bronny credit for actually trying to say the right thing, yeah. showing up in the right places, and at the end of the day. And by the way, I like seeing LeBron you. in the stands as a proud dad. I like that. that that's this a great man example from is fatherhood. Is the number one scorer in NBA. History. What does that have yeah. to do with his son being I mean, at look, the draft? Scottie combine? Pippen's kid was my, playing uh, on the Lakers. But a my, we years didn't shine the light on Scottie Pippen's son like this. We can't move the goalposts and feel like we go do okay, it when it's so convenient what, 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 for for what, us. I agree. Yeah, he's right. And look, Bron- I've seen Bronny play in practice, what, five, six times in games, three different times in, in person. And he, like I said, he's, he's a four-star caliber college player. He is a hustle guy. Him being listed six foot four was always the most hilarious thing. Like, <laughs> we have talked off air, you know, during you know following hoop summits and stuff like that. Like the actual size of guys. Like when Bronny came through, you and I joked about six four, huh? No, no, mm-hmm. no. If I don't have to look up at you, you're not that big. <laughs> like it's just there. There's certain things that kind of go along with that. And yeah, he had a forty inch vertical to combine, and his physical testing stuff was great. But he's not playing cornerback. He's playing in the NBA. No. And I think there there's this slippery slope that that we're on right now, and that 
I think there is this thirst, and we talked about this with the Knicks, right? Mm-hmm. To push that we are going to probably see something that we have not seen since like Ken Griffey Jr. and Ken Griffey Sr., mm-hmm. right? Two guys, father, son playing together on team. They want that to happen so bad. Yeah. But at the same time, they're doing a disservice to Bronny James because of like when they say he says all of the right things, yeah. right? No, he, and, and he Ronnie does. does. He does, and I think he gets it. And I, I think and as we hear Ramona Shelburne say, like it's a great show of fatherhood. Yeah, it, it is because Bronny does say the right things, mm-hmm. and we haven't had any issues with Bronny James. Just like we haven't had issues off the court with LeBron James. No, the either. The worst thing he's ever done is the decision publicly. The, but what we are doing, and where it becomes a disservice to Bronny is that you're talking about him like he is a lottery pick. In that expectation, people cannot draw the line between the storyline of Bronny James playing with his dad mm-hmm. and the reality, and of, him the reality of he is not LeBron, he is not a lottery pick, He's and he should not two-way. be viewed as a lottery pick. He's probably going to get a two-way contract. And that, <laughs> I think, is where all of this coverage, and I think what Perk is trying to get to is that this is, eventually is a disservice to the player himself mm-hmm. in Bronny James. And I think that when that, when you go down that road and you say, we've made the cool story of what if LeBron and Bronny play together into his draft stock is rising. Okay. What from not Pump being drafted price. to a second round pick. This thing is like, you've, you talk to execs in the league and give them true serum. Nobody. Not a one that I have talked to is like, yeah, no, you could see him going in the first you want round. To, you want me to on, spin, a, on a talent. You view. want me to spin on this for you? Go. This is actually Kendrick Perkins being Mr. Clutch in that they want to drive the draft stock down so they can just, the Lakers can just sign Bronny as a free agent and he doesn't have to leave because they want, everybody is tampering down the expectations after Danny Ainge, the reports are Utah's looking at drafting him. And you, Danny Ainge would be the dude to be like, you want to play with your kid? Come to Salt Lake City. Or trade up. Use capital to trade up. Why? Right. Because Danny Ainge is a Celtic. Yeah. At heart. No. Screw over the Lakers? Absolutely. Yeah. And he knows, he knows where LeBron wants to continue to play. And mm-hmm. it's in L.A. He knows that the Lakers want to to get Bronny James, but he also looks at a draft board and goes, got him. Hmm. Also, LeBron's not in charge of the coaching search. Maybe we'll get to that a little bit later, too. Mm -hmm. That's been leaking out.